13. We've been in Romans for some time. Chapter 12, we had this major transition, one of those giant therefores. Because of what he said in chapters 1 through 11, he can say what he's saying now. And that's what very important to remember as we read this. Because what he's dealing with, he started in chapter 12, is, is what do we do with our spiritual life? Well, we offer our body as a living sacrifice. That is our spiritual worship. That's what worship is. Acknowledging that God is God, and we do that by offering our bodies as a living something that died. And that goes back to chapter 6, that commitment we made when we put Jesus on in baptism. And that's what worship really is. But then there's the rest of our lives. How do we deal with each other? He talks about the situation in the assembly. He says, you know, you use your gifts. Like uh, Celeste talked about this morning. And we talked about that in chapter 12. And then he got to the section where he um, talked about loving must be sincere. And he had that whole list of things that, you know, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. He's basically giving us a roadmap of what, what we do. How do we handle our lives? Last week he talked about paying taxes if you owe taxes. <coughs> respect if you owe respect. Doing those things. And, and the fact that our spiritual lives are the most important as opposed to trying to make some heaven on earth here, some government that we consider godly. He didn't give us any instructions about that. He said, hey, if, you're, if you owe taxes, you pay taxes. If you owe revenue, you owe revenue. He didn't say you need to change political systems. It's not that you don't need to be involved in trying to get things better, but just that is not the major in your life. And now... We talk about another part of a plan that's, that I call it, it's a very simple plan. And I have to tell you, I, I, the, the movies, the Pirates of the Caribbean, I enjoy those movies. <coughs> and one of my favorite lines is a line that, that Captain Jack said when he said, what are you going to do? He says, well, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to get her back. And how are you going to do that? So I'm going to kill everybody that's in the way. He said, that's a good plan. It's simple, easy to remember. I like it. What we're going to talk about today is a simple plan. It's really simple. Very easy to remember. And we're going to start in verse 9 of chapter 13. It says, let no debt remain outstanding. Well, he just already said, you know, if you owe taxes, you get taxes, if revenue, revenue. He said, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to his neighbor, therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Okay, so how do we relate to other people? How do we relate to people that we call neighbors? Now, there was a time that that meant something very specific to us. You know, you had a neighbor. People that came over and checked on your dog when you were gone. You know, watered your lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you still do that for your neighbors. Some of you don't even know your neighbors anymore. It's not like that anymore. This is basically how you deal with everybody else. How do you deal with everybody else? The people you meet in the streets, the people you work with, the people you meet in the store. How do you deal with your society and your culture? He says it's really easy. Love. Sounds easy, right? This is actually this is actually a quote out of the Old Testament. Love your neighbors yourself. Have you ever tried to look that up in your Old Testament? You know it's not one of the top ten? It's not one of the you know, ten commandments. Yeah, there are more than ten commandments. We've been through this before, right? All right, but there's the top ten ones that you see listed on walls. And people fight about whether they should be in courtrooms or in schools or not. And, you know, okay, that's just ten of them. There is a lot of them. And if you look this passage up, it's in Deuteronomy. It's in chapter 19. 
in verse 18. It's not even in the book of Exodus. It was in the second reading of the law, which is what the word Deuteronomy means. Okay? The second time they read the law. And, and it's stuck in there. There's a whole chapter about who you can and can't have sex with. And snorkels are out. Okay? Read it. Interesting chapter. Okay? And then after that, there's this little sentence that says, love your neighbor as yourself. And then, it reminds us not to grow more than one kind of crop in our garden. And not to wear clothes that are made of more than one type of material. Which I'm sure you guys spend a lot of time thinking about. Right? In the midst of all that is this one little sentence, love your neighbor as yourself. And, and you don't hear much about it, but Jesus talked about it a lot. You look it up in the Gospels, he talked about it over and over and over. And inevitably, it would get into a debate. The most famous, famous debate is, a man said, well then, who is my neighbor? And we got that really cool story, right? About the Good Samaritan. And Jesus was answering, who is my neighbor? Is this what you do with this passage? Do you debate about who, who, who do I need to love? <laughs> uh, you know, who, who actually is my neighbor? I mean, if they live, if they live in another, another county, another school district, <laughs> are they really my... I mean, if, if, if they speak a different language, if their skin is a different color, if they pay taxes to a different government, are they really my Are they really my neighbor? Is that what you do with this passage? Because of what he talked about in chapters 1 through 11. Because he talked about the grace that we stand under and the fact that we are all sinful and we all need forgiveness. And that there is nobody more righteous than anybody else. That we're all purified by the blood of Christ. The thing that we celebrate every week. Because of that, you are free not to have to debate that anymore. You're free. You're free. You're free to consider everybody your neighbor. You're free to get rid of the debate about who should I love and who should I not love? You're free. You're free from that. You don't have to mess with that anymore. Well, what if they're not Jewish? Yeah, you're free to love them. What if they are Jewish? Yeah, you're free to love them. What if they're slaves? Well, you're free to love them. What if they're females? You're free to love them. What if they are... You're free. You are free to love them. Now, recently in our culture... People have come across what is really a fundamental truth that they've been dealing with that says, if you don't love yourself, how can you love your neighbor as yourself? Have you heard that? Right? You need to be able to love yourself in order to love your neighbor as yourself. That's true. You're free. <laughs> You're free to love yourself. You're free. You've been set free to love who you are right now. To treat yourself in a loving manner. You're free to value yourself. You're free from all that. Because of what Jesus has done, you are free. You're free. And that whole debate about who is my neighbor and whether I should love myself or not, it's out the window. It's... A simple plan. It's a good plan. <laughs> Easy to remember. You love them. You don't do any harm because you love them. You love yourself so you don't do what harms you. You love. You're free to do that. But if you hadn't had chapters 1 through 11, you wouldn't have known that. If you're still in some kind of quandary about who is lovable and who's not lovable. Who is forgivable and who is not forgivable. <clears throat> who is worthy and who is not worthy. Then you are... Yeah, you're in serious problems with this. 